24th of June, 2023. This is now the fourth video in the series looking at not just women in ministry, but men in ministry as well. Of course, we're talking about <clears throat> men of God, women of God, born again, Holy Spirit filled, ministers in Christ, anointed by Christ, men and women of God. And I'm not wanting to go over the old ground of the previous three videos, but just to say I am emphasizing ministry of men and women in the power of the Holy Spirit with Holy Spirit gifts and Holy Spirit fruit evident. And of course, I know you'll agree with that if you are mature believers in Christ and you believe in body ministry. Power of the Holy Spirit, including gifts of the Spirit to do with prophecy, wisdom, teaching, healing, words of knowledge, words of teaching, and it's not the man or the woman, it's the Holy Spirit. And teaching is like prophecy because it's God's teaching through a person whether they're male or female. Or even, as I say in the notes attached to this video, when God used Balaam's donkey to tell the prophet what the prophet didn't see. The donkey spoke to the prophet and gave God's message to the prophet. So, I'm not emphasizing men in ministry, I'm not emphasizing women in, in ministry, <clears throat> but various scriptures have come out from various people over the last three videos asserting the fact that a, a woman cannot have an authority over the man. That the scriptures are clear, a woman cannot teach a man. And the scriptures are clear. <clears throat> The context of those scriptures are very clear. It's about authority, power, and ultimately control. And then the word control can bring alarm bells on in people's minds because very few people want to be controlled, but there are many people who like to be in control and they can even assert it's godly control <clears throat> over meetings over people's lives over people employed by the local church denomination organization that everything has to happen in order and under control and of course god is a god of order and every government is under law and order, and the country it runs is under law and order. And of course, we know scriptures are clear, obey those in authority, obey them and pray for those in authority and obey them. Because government is better than no government. Now, I'm being very careful with my language here because we're talking about both the world's government and the government within the church. And when I say the church, of course, there are thousands of denominations and each denomination has its own government. And the government of worldly uh, organizations are under the government of the country of its uh, um, inception, its registration. So the world's governments govern all the companies within their borders under the laws of that country. And that, of course, includes church organizations and charities. So every 
organization ultimately is subject to the law of the country. And again, we are told in scripture to obey those in authority. But of course, we have a higher authority, God, the uncreated creator, has created us, saved us, the body of Christ, and we're still here in this world to do the will of God the Father, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit. So this is a big picture which is overarching all the local pictures of local churches, local denominations, local organizations, where those in authority have the power and control over the people within the building, within the organization, the staff and the volunteers. And of course, this is the pattern for this world. But what I'm wanting to talk about is the power and authority of God himself who ultimately has control over everything. However, he's given man free will. And it's not that God doesn't care for us and he's left us as children to run the world as we want to run the world. Absolutely not. God has set in order the laws of the spiritual laws of life as much as physics as much as biology as much as chemistry there are spiritual laws that govern life repentance is one of those clear spiritual laws that god has given us loving one another forgiving one another these are what i call spiritual laws governing me on the inside because Jesus Christ is my government on the inside. He's the governor, he's the king, he's the Lord, the master, the teacher, the Holy Spirit. He teaches me and governs me on the inside through my conscience and I'm just one person, one person. And, and Jesus set me free. And I've been learning for 39 years, basically, what is right and what is wrong. What is good and what is evil. What is wicked, what is sinful. <clears throat> I'm, I'm learning and I'm still learning. We must never forget that we are children, the children of God. No matter what age you are, no matter how long you've been saved, decades, we are still learning and today's a new day. So we're still wanting to look at the subject of power, authority and control. So I want to now describe a perfect marriage of a perfect husband and a nearly perfect wife. A perfect husband and a nearly perfect wife. That seems unfair. That what husband can be perfect and why is his wife in this illustration only nearly perfect? Well, if the Holy Spirit has already told you, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the perfect husband, the perfect bridegroom, the perfect God, the perfect man. And that fact that Jesus is coming soon gives us the incentive that we must be like him. And of course, Jesus Christ is coming for his bride. He's coming for the virgin bride. And that includes men and women. So it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Do you recognize that Jesus is coming back for his perfect bride, his perfect church. And before you jump at the word perfect, God's eyes are ranging throughout this earth looking for perfect hearts. In one version of the Bible, that is what it says, perfect hearts. God is looking throughout this earth for perfect hearts. 
and by perfect, other versions state it as fully open, fully submitted, fully committed to God. The heart within every believer, every disciple, everyone who is a servant of God. Our hearts are being perfected on the inside by the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's the counsellor. He's the one who's helping us on the inside to distinguish between spirits. Holy Spirit gifts are given to every born-again disciple who is born from above through repentance by the blood of the Lamb, through a realization that we are sinners needing salvation by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb. For me, 39 years ago. For Trevor, 52 years ago. But we're in the same place today, meeting today in fellowship with a, a, a couple of other brothers, and we were talking about the things of God from a husband's perspective. So going back to the illustration, the perfect husband is Jesus Christ. But of course, I have emphasized it many times over the last many months, we are not Jesus, we're not the Holy Spirit, we're not God. But by our submission to God, God himself is exalting us. Not because we are doing anything, but because we submit to the Holy Spirit. The perfecter, the transformer, the teacher the one who instructs us on the inside, the one who's in our conscience telling us that's right, that's wrong. Don't look at that person. Don't look at that person. So I'm bringing our focus right down to the marriage again, as Christ loves his church and Christ is betrothed to us. We are betrothed to Christ. Our focus if you imagine we're getting married tomorrow, our focus today is all about the tomorrow that we are getting married and we're making sure we've got the right clothes, that our clothes are clean. We're not concerned about worldly affairs anymore. And these issues, these red herrings that rear up where men get angry with women and women get angry with men and women get angry with women and men get angry with men, quarreling and fighting over vying for position. And God is not pleased. Each one of us, each one of us must be humble before each other. We must love one another as Christ loves us. The husband the bridegroom, the one who's coming. His spirit is in us. And as we submit to the Holy Spirit, we are being changed, transformed, and conformed into the likeness of Christ. Because unity of Christ and his church is a, it's a perfect unity. <clears throat> and Christ is perfect and we are not. But Christ wants to be united with us, like a husband and a bride. And we know that day is coming. And we know we're getting closer to that day, individually, corporately. And this world is going the opposite direction. As we are submitting to God and the Holy Spirit and allowing him to change us, the world is resisting the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> opposing the Holy Spirit quenching the Holy Spirit, shutting their ears to the Holy Spirit, and they're going on the broad road that leads to hell, death and destruction. Unholy relationships, unholy coupling that will not be blessed by God in any sense. Absolutely not. And if there are any ministers that you know personally who are sitting on the fence wondering whether the Anglicans should bless same-sex coupling, 
send them the link to this video. And God is telling them to their face, no, he will not bless the unblessable. You cannot make God do anything you want him to do. You cannot make God your rubber stamp. That is to bring God down to a thing. That is to insult him, and that is bordering on blasphemy. The Holy Spirit, he is showing us the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. The Bible is the truth. <clears throat> the Bible has been misinterpreted by many people, false doctrines, wrong emphases, and a sheer error. <clears throat> and doctrines of demons, not least of which cessationism, the denial of prophecy in this time, this age, this day. When God says again, today if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. God is commanding us. God is not making requests. Does a general make a request of his private soldier? Absolutely not. It's an order, a command. Of course we have free will. Of course we choose to obey God. We hear Jesus as shepherd because we are his sheep. And when he says, come, follow me, I'm taking you to a new pasture, why would we resist the voice of the voice of Jesus Christ, the shepherd? Why would we resist our shepherd's voice? So the perfect marriage of Christ and his church. And of course, you know the passage, Ephesians 4, 5 and 6, and other scriptures talk about marriage in the new covenant under the blood of Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Husband, love your wife as Christ loves his church and gave his life for her. There is an order, a perfect order in terms of authority and God has made it clear the writers of the New Testament have made it very clear, but they have only written what the Holy Spirit has led them to write concerning the times when the church was being established and growing in various localities. That when Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, that was for now for the church in everywhere, as are every one of the letters. And we, we can see in the letters that were written, there are some lukewarm places where they're lukewarm to God. They don't give God an answer. God tells them clearly something requiring a yes or a no, and they are silent. And we get people like that, Trevor and I, in our lives. They will not decide yes or no. So pray for us here in Norwich, UK. We had a great men's breakfast this morning. We met our good friend Stuart Spagatner, whom you know very well. Pray for us in our circumstances. We all have pressures on our lives personally. The marriage of two is an expression of the one body of Christ, where the two shall become one. But of course, I am emphasizing, I will never stop emphasizing a naturally born man of God, naturally born and a man of God, a naturally born woman who is a woman of God, married in Christ, on the foundation of Christ, married by God, joined together with a cornerstone between them, a cord of three strands, Ecclesiastes. This is the biblical marriage. With one door, Christ, and the capstone is Christ, the foundation is Christ, and the cornerstone is Christ, and the two shall become one. And the submission must be a hundred percent one to another. And of course, the man has the authority because God has said, Husband, in Christ the head, you are the head of your wife. And when a woman of God accepts the truth of Scripture, and there are many women of God out there, married or not, and they do understand. What God has said cannot be changed. 
And when you settle in to obey God in all things, whatever role function you have in your personal life, in your marriage, in your relationships, then that's when the blessing comes because you are obeying God and God will bless you. So pray for every marriage to become biblical. If they're not, for every husband to submit to the wife as the wife submits to him and he submits to her. And this is an ongoing submission of one to another, Ephesians 5.21. And then any children that are born into that united union in Christ, with Christ, through Christ, then those children are born into, the, into a perfect marriage. A perfect marriage. A marriage that is perfectible is a perfect marriage. A marriage where both husband and wife submit 100% to each other and do everything out of reverence for Christ, that is your perfect marriage. And every perfect marriage in that sense is being perfected into a new wineskin every day. New every morning. New every morning. And I know what I'm saying for some of you is so out there because you're in a marriage that is absolutely not perfect and you lack faith that God can change your marriage to make that marriage a perfect marriage in Christ because one or both of you is struggling against the other one instead of working together and praying together and submitting together because God has said where two agree on anything on earth it will be done and unity begins with you too. Husband, submit to your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. The submission is mutual 100%. Power and authority and control is something else. Ultimately, the fear of God controls me. Keeps me in check. As does the holy hedge of scripture. Hebrews 6 and 10. 1 John 3. 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22, and Romans 6. Study them, and you'll work out that deliberate sin is crucifying Christ all over again. Having been saved, why do I want to deliberately sin when I know, not, when I know it's hurting God? 100%. Putting Jesus on the cross again. My sin. Deliberately. So when God says, fast from that thing, don't look at that thing, whether it's a magazine or a person, or even, uh, even social media, stop scrolling through your phone, you're wasting time, and you hear God's voice, you come under conviction, you stop. You stop and pray. Those who mature in Christ, we realize there's always an issue that God is dealing with us with every day, every moment of the day sometimes. And God is gracious and kind and, and long-suffering us when we are wanting to be set free from a certain issue. Pray for someone, Trevor and I are trying to help still, trying to bring the truth to his mind that he's an addict that his addiction is idolatry, a false comforter. And only when people realize they are sinning against God, they must want to hate that particular sin to never do that again. Jesus sets us free from addictions, one addiction at a time. Of course, we know the enemy is the one who wants us to become just as we were before we were saved. To go back and eat and drink the vomit in the pig pen. I was a prodigal son. I left the pig pen. I went back to my father, God, through Christ, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be a son. So God bless you, brethren of the one God. I hope this closes the issue of, of some 
people claiming that women cannot be ministers. Women are ministers in the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's not the woman speaking. It's not the man speaking. It's not a donkey speaking. It's God using us as vessels. And it doesn't matter if it's a male vessel or a female vessel. The issue of teaching, a woman doesn't teach. If a woman is saying something and it's from the Holy Spirit, it's not the woman. It's not the man. But if it's a woman wanting to lord it over a man, then that is where the scripture applies to that woman. And, and somebody in authority will gently take her to one side and say, no, that's not the Holy Spirit, that's you. Remain silent. Tell your husband what you want to say to the church. He will test it and weigh it and he will bring it out. And that is what God has said in the scripture. And scripture cannot be broken. This is not a man wanting to assert maleness over femaleness. That is the spirit of feminism, feminism which has crept into the minds of certain women in the churches to say that any man telling them what to do is a chauvinist. That's a lie. That's a lie. Both feminism and chauvinism have nothing to do with Christ. And Christ wasn't a, a chauvinist and he wasn't a feminist. God is God. And what, has, what God has said, God has written, is written, and scripture cannot be broken. Beware those who, who build a case for themselves around scripture but they are like lawyers looking for loopholes in the scriptures to justify themselves. Legalistic lawyers. <clears throat> My prayer is one day of salvation at a time. We submit to God. We submit one to another, especially in the marriages, especially in the marriages. A biblical marriage is a sign to society that they don't realize it, but God is alive in the biblical marriages. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about JWs. I'm talking about us, the body of Christ. So pray for us as we are praying for you. God bless you. God bless. We'll speak again according to God's will. God bless.